What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief's Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Air Force, the Army, I'm sorry, the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Uh, before we get started with our guest today, I would love to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Julie Mitchell and Leah Matthews. How you ladies doing? Hi, Chief. Hi, Julie. Hi, doing Leah. Good. How are you guys? I'm Hi, doing, Chief. <laughs> hey, what's going on? How you doing? I'm doing wonderful, wonderful. And today we got an outstanding guest. We got a, a, a family mate, a sis, my sister from another mister that I've never met before uh, <laughs> in person. But, uh, you know, she's, she's, she's uh, one of our own. So uh, without further ado, Julie, do you mind introducing today's guest? Hey, you got it, Chief, and you're right. She is one of our own. For those of you who don't know, the exchange has about 30 active duty service members assigned to our organization. So like Chief Osby here, and today we're chatting with his counterpart overseas, the exchange's Europe Southwest Asia region senior enlisted advisor. Please welcome Sergeant Major Julia Henry. Hey. Ah, Sergeant Henry. Hello, Sergeant team. Major. <laughs> Sergeant Major. Oh, I like that, Chief. <laughs> That's good. That's good, Chief. <laughs> Sergeant Major Henry, thank you so much for taking time out to join us. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions for her, we'll be reading those live throughout the broadcast. Now's a good time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not already following us, you should. That way you'll know who's coming up next on Chief Chats because they are every week, Tuesday and Thursday. Sergeant Major Henry, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Chief. Thank you all for having me. Yeah, that's awesome. So thank you uh, for, for giving us a little bit of your time today. Uh, can you tell us where you're calling from? Well, I am calling in today from K-Town, Germany. K-Town? K-Town. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah, I've never met anybody that doesn't love Germany. So uh, I'm sure you're having a wonderful time out there. It's my first time in Europe and I am loving it. It took a whole 26 years of my career to actually get here. So I'm enjoying it. Awesome. Oh, that's great, ma'am. And as we talked about just a couple seconds ago, you're the senior enlisted advisor for our Europe, Southwest Asia region. So you're like the chief Osby of Europe people might say. So can you kind of break down for us what that means and what your role is at the exchange? So as the senior enlisted advisor for Europe, Southwest Asia and Africa, I serve as the focal point for the exchange as a point of communication between the exchange and our service members and their uh, family members. Basically go around traveling from army and air force installations, basically giving them information on what's coming, going on with the exchange, what's changing, what's new, and also providing feedback on how we can better serve our customers to the exchange. Excellent. And as you know, ma'am, the exchange is unique as a retailer and that's really most apparent in our operations at contingency locations. So if you're a soldier or airman deployed to a con contingency location, what can you expect from the exchange there? Well, if you are a a soldier deploying to a contingency location, you can expect to still receive a taste of home because that's what the exchange is all about, going where you are. We go, our motto is we go where you go. So you can expect a taste of home uh, in locations where you don't have a big store, say like a Ramstein uh, or the one in Korea, you can expect a trailer, which is called a mobile field exchange short MFE. You'll see those in your location ran by a couple of associates. Um, if you do not have those in your location and you don't have any kind of exchange services there, your chain of command, your commander can request IEFA, which is AFI's Impress Fund Activity. They can request that and we basically loan a certain money, amount of money and give you all a list of products to choose from. You request those items, we ship it out to your location and you basically run that facility on your own. It's command driven and it's command ran, not AFI's ran. So make sure we understand that portion. Yes, man, I, I did not know that. And so um, I, I'm, you know, you brought up the, the mission statement of we go where you go. And, and uh, I absolutely love that mission statement. And uh, I've 
I've been a customer of AP's for the past 23 years uh, in some form or fashion. And it, they've always been where I've been. And matter of fact, so much that I get a leaflet every, every PCS I go, I get, I get an advertisement and they find me before anything finds me. So I was like, man, I ain't changed my address yet. And I, and I got an AP's leaflet in the mail. So that's, that's awesome. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty new to this role. I'm in day eight right now. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if you can help, help me out a little Ooh. bit. Uh, so what kind of advice do you have for me serving as the exchange senior listed advisor? So Chief, since you are the baby of the team, I will <laughs> tell you, you've done some, what you call it, Louisiana math, which brought us out to about 0. 0.00, might be another 0, 08 percentile in there. As Julie Mitchell um, said earlier that we make up about, we're about 30, 30, 30 soldiers and airmen deep in the exchange. So what I would re recommend that you do while you're assigned to the exchange is find your niche, something to basically focus on, um, whether it is customer comments or whatever the case may be, you will receive a lot of those. So I would recommend to, to come up with a work-life balance because your phone, your email will be going off all the time. So a lot of us, we, we want to answer those emails and those phone calls as soon as they come in because it's a customer comments or a customer has some kind of complaint or even good comments. So just find out that work-life balance and getting out and talking to soldiers, airmen, white, when you, you know, our service members and your families, if you're standing in line, just strike up a conversation with them. They'll give you information on how we can better serve them and or what we're doing great. Thank you for your advice on that, definitely. You're welcome. Sergeant Major Henry, you talked briefly about the MFEs that support mobily downrange and in austere locations. They're great. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, been, I've been able to see those in person and support that they provide. People also know that we have, you know, the, the main stores, gas stations, restaurants, but there's a lot of things that we do. I think that the average person might not know about like the school meal program. So can you talk to us a little bit about school meals in Europe and how we serve Warfighters children. So our school meal program, the exchange overseas is the only location where the exchange actually runs the school meal program for Dodia. Stateside is ran by someone in the States. But here we're actually given the opportunity to take care of our babies. And that for us, that's one of our most noble missions. Uh, so with that, we have a nutritionist that's on staff that actually helps to come up with nutritious as well as um, healthy meals for our, our kids. Because, you know, we don't want our kids just eating straight potato chips and snacks all throughout the day. So we have that person on the staff to help to create those healthy meals for our, 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 our children. And also with that, our school meal program, last year, we served over 2.4 million meals to our, our children. And in doing that, those meals were either at cost or at reduced cost. So when I say at cost, meaning those are for the children that are not on free and or reduced lunch. Um, the reduced cost is for those people that's on free and reduced lunch. So what I would recommend for our, our family members out there, you don't know if you qualify. Sometimes you may be like, you may think because of your rank that you don't qualify, but it's great to apply because there are a lot of variables that doesn't apply when it comes to applying for that free and reduced meal. So apply it. The worst thing that you say is no. You don't know if you qualify or not until you get that, that no. And, and um, with the overseas, the, the school meal program as well, what we do uh, during COVID, we actually came up with a plan and we did some grab and go. We serve breakfast as well as lunch to our children, which reduce the stress on our parents at home. Because now you're juggling a new life, you're juggling scheduling. Now you have to make sure the babies are eating, you're making sure that they're doing their schoolwork. So we take that portion off of your plate to make sure that they have something on their plate that you don't have to provide. That is great. And what peace of, what peace of mind, right? Like. I'm a mom and I can't imagine being overseas serving and then having to deal with the virtual schooling plus figuring out like, how's my kid going to eat today? So what, what a great stress you said it, you know, reducing stress spot on. And I am assuming that you guys have gotten great feedback um, on the program. 
we've received plenty of feedback. Um, and I, I know that school is starting up next week and I believe we're going back to the classroom and our team, they are ready. They've been trained up, they trained up last week and they're excited about going back to make sure that our babies are, are taken care of. Excellent. We're all about safe, secure, and sanitized shopping oh, yes. experience, dining experiences. So I know that the team, you and the team will make sure that everybody's taken care of appropriately. Absolutely. Well, thank you, ma'am. I just want to pause for a second and uh, look at the Facebook live feed. So people are tuning in from all over the world. Uh, Denise Hunter says, hey, family. And she also said, great advice. Um, Michelle Laforte says, good morning from Arizona. And Jen Huffman says, hello, about to board my plane from Philly to Fort Worth. Have a great day. Hello, teammates. Uh, safe flight. And hello, good morning and good afternoon, teammates that's out there watching. That's good stuff. So, um, so our Major Henry, you know, you know, we we still we got this small little portion of us that that are in the military that work for AFES. And uh one of one of our things, we have to stay fit to fight no matter what. And so COVID has made it a little more challenging because it closed down gyms. Uh folks um, are, are scared to go outside, they're wearing masks, they're doing all this other stuff. Uh so I, I want to know how you how have you been staying in shape these last few months? Or you got and do you have any tips or suggestions for our viewers? Uh, on a fitness plan now that the gyms are kind of somewhat open now and closed or whatever the case may be? Well, see, Chief, for us, COVID is not an excuse to gain your weight. <laughs> you, can't right. use, you can't use COVID as not being able to fit in your uniform. So me, I'm a little bit on a thrifty side. So I love to eat, but I have to work out because I don't want to have to end up buying new uniforms. So some of the things that I actually do, me personally, I ride a bike, I go walking, and I've been doing a lot of yoga. I know, one-handed yoga, elbows, but uh, that, that's, that's just basically what I've been doing to basically stay in shape. And my teammates, they're out here getting it in. I know a lot of uh, leadership, they've actually put in a lot of systems in place to make sure their service members are getting after it. They've done 100 mile challenges and so on and so forth to make sure that their people are actually getting after it. And these, these service members are, we're competitive, man. Yeah. So what got you into yoga? Because uh, somebody tried to get me to do some hot yoga one time, and it, that just didn't sound comfortable at all. That sounds very, very uncomfortable. Well, the yoga for me, I had to pick that up because I have some back issues. So the yoga is actually helping to soothe some of those issues. Not taking away the pain, but it helps with the flexibility, the stretching. Okay. Well, I might try it one day. I think you should, Chief. You don't have to go on high <laughs> yoga. Just go regular yoga to see what that feels like first. You don't want to go all in and the first time. Then you might not want to go back. Yeah, I, I'm not as flexible. Well, I don't think I've ever been flexible, but I'm definitely not flexible now at this, this point in my life. But uh, yeah, okay, I, I'll try though. You you try. you seem very convincing, so uh, I'm going to try one time. You're all I'm in for the up. yoga. <laughs> on camera so i guess i gotta be all in <laughs> we're gonna hold you to that <laughs> we want it we want to follow up with that yes exactly <laughs> well sergeant major henry we'd love to learn a little more about you ma'am where are you from how long have you served and how did you end up joining the military well i am originally from jamaica i grew up in florida um i've been in the army now a total of 26 years i just had an anniversary last year and congratulations. Thank you. So my story is a little bit different. My decision to join the army was not planned. It was very impulsive. I had a friend of mine after school, she was going somewhere. I didn't know where she was going. I just turned around, hey, where are you going? She said, I'm going to the recruiter station. I was like, huh, what is that? I'll walk with you. Now, 26 years later, here I am. I raised my right hand and I've been here since. I love, I love that story. I love that story so much. Um, you mentioned that this is your first assignment in Europe. What have some of your favorite assignments been throughout your 26 year career? So two of my most favorite and memorable um, assignments has been uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana. I know a lot of people when they hear Louisiana, Chiefs, <laughs> no knock on your home state. Come on now, come on now, so I'm <laughs> 
a lot of people, when they hear Louisiana, they say, oh, no one wants to go to Fort Polk because it's Camp Swampy. However, that was one of my most uh, enjoyable assignments where I, I basically worked and I was assigned as a uh, observer controller where I prepared service members to deploy to Iraq and or Afghanistan. Um, and the next one has been this one. The reason for this one is because I'm able to impact so many people's lives, not just our service members, but their families as well. And our team here is, I have a great team. So if, I, if we come up with a decision or I say, hey, this doesn't make soldier sense, airman sense, customer sense, then our team actually looks at that and make the decision and say, okay, all right, we won't go that route, we'll go this route. So it's, it's easy for me to impact change, which will affect many lives. So that's part of the reason why I, I, I truly love this assignment. Awesome, and, and the, the way you talk talking it up, man, I'm super excited to be here. So, uh, Chief, you're gonna love it. Yeah, I, I, I'm already loving it. You guys are wonderful. I got a wonderful team. You guys have been supporting me since day one. So uh, I look forward to, to being on this team. Uh, going forward. So my next question is talking about military resiliency. So, you know, in the military, uh, we, you know, we, we're locked in so much and we're mission, mission, mission sometimes, and then life, life happens. And so sometimes, and life happens to everybody and, and we're probably not a hundred percent self or we have issues or stuff going on. How do you, what, how do you deal with, how do you overcome uh, those type of uh, scenarios or, you know, what, what are you doing to, to build your mental re resiliency? So Chief, in building my mental uh, resiliency, I'm MRT trained, my master resilience trainer. So I apply a lot of those tools to, that I have in my kit bag as an experienced uh, service member. Uh, you know, sometimes I take some of those tools out of my, out of my kit bag to make sure that I'm staying afloat uh, because we're human. We're not robots. We all are going to go through challenges, changes, emotional, whatever the case may be, especially if we're in a place by ourselves. Like, I mean, I'm here by myself now because my kid went back to school. So some of the things that I do, I, I sleep. I sleep a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good thing. I cook and I eat a lot. So because I eat a lot, out, meaning taking long walks, riding my bike. And Germany, is a, there's a lot of nature. There's a lot of nature, a lot of trails in my neighborhood. So I go on a lot of walks. And while I'm out there, I'm taking landscape pictures. It's, I have <laughs> many, many pictures on my page of nothing but landscape. Um, because that's that's one of the things that I like doing. And now with COVID, it's putting a little bit of damper on my travels. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been able to get out and travel too much. But I plan on doing that as soon as we're able to. Uh, we're able to go to some locations. But hey, we got to cover up. So um, <laughs> we're doing that. And that, that's, those are some of the things that I'm doing to, to work on my resilience to make sure that my mental state of mind is, is, is good. Thanks for those tidbits. Yes, great advice. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I think especially now we can all use as many ideas as possible, right? And as you know, we have Soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, Coasties, and military families watching from all over the world. Do you have any words of encouragement to share with all of our heroes during these challenging times with the pandemic? Well, what I would share with uh, some of our, our, our service members, I want to say soldiers, airmen, Marines, I'm just going to say service members and family members, um, is just basically tell you all thanks first and foremost, for your resiliency. A, a lot of times, you know, we look at especially the young soldiers and say, oh man, I don't know what y'all are thinking, but just let you all know that we are proud. I am proud of everything that you all are doing to sustain yourselves and your families and make and tell your family members, thank you too, for being that crutch, for pushing us, you know, catapulting us forward to make sure that we are good and we're fit to fight um, and just continue to take care of each other. Thanks for, thanks for those words of encouragement. Um, I would love to hear your perspective on leadership. So I can remember me as uh, when I first started my career in the Marine Corps and at 19 years old, I was prom meritoriously promoted to corporal. And so I went from, you know, being, being a, an E3 to an E4 NCO 
at 19. And that transition was really hard for me. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if I was ready, but uh, uh, folks th saw that I, or thought that I was ready. Um, so how, what kind of advice would you give Corporal Osby moving into a leadership position, um, you know, as an as a experienced and seasoned Sergeant Major? Well, Chief, I'm going to let you know now that Corporal was one of the ranks I did not want to wear in the Army because <laughs> you're overworking you and you're not getting paid for it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I can attest to that one. Amen. So that was a rank I said no. Um, but if uh, a young so soldier or anyone that comes into my office that is going to a leadership position or just in life general uh, is just be humble. Walk in humility because at the end of the day, you have to remember that it's not about you. Someone saw fit, like you said, someone saw it in you to push you to that next level of leadership. So just be humble, humble yourself uh, and, and serve. Don't think you're going into that position to be served, but have that, uh, that mentality that, okay, I'm here to basically serve the people that's below me because at the end of the day, they're the ones that, that's the reason why I'm here. So you'd have to have that um, servant leadership. Uh, you know, you go in there with servant leadership, like, you know what, I'm there for them. They're not here for me. What can I do to help you, the next person coming behind me? Because at the end of the day, we stand on the shoulders of giants. It's not about us. Absolutely. And we get the unique opportunity to train our replacements. And so. Uh, exactly. Because you know, we're not here forever. Absolutely. We all have an expiration date. Absolutely. So it's uh, just when. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, you have such a servant's heart. And I loved that advice. It's not about you. I think that is and a really important takeaway from today's conversation, something that all of us can use, whether we're serving or whether we're military or part of the military family or a civilian. I love that. You're getting great feedback online. You're getting lots of likes and loves on our Facebook page. Sandy Lute says that she missed getting to see you at the conferences this year. Um, that was, that is usually you, we are able to, to see you in person at our conferences. So she's right. We definitely missed seeing you this year. And Alex Dewberry says, welcome to the exchange family. Um, what else do we have on here? Um, Michelle says, I take a lot of pictures too. Love Arizona's mountains and the sunsets and sunrises are so amazing. So, and then um, Celia Anthony says, thank you for your service. And we just have, yeah, just people watching all over, really enjoying listening to you and, and hearing what you have to share with us. Awesome. I forgot to put out a disclaimer. So I'm happy my Team Europe didn't start peppering me with questions because they said they would today. <laughs> so thank you all, Team Europe, for not peppering me with questions. She I love forgot. you all. Y'all are right here. Y'all are right here in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. They're going to catch up on you. They're going to catch up with you doing something. They, like, they gonna I think they will. <laughs> yeah, they <were>. <laughs> <laughs> so uh sorry major henry man it's been a pleasure 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 talking with you today uh you've given us some some you've given me some wise words and and uh i definitely uh, glad that I'm a, I'm a teammate of yours now uh looking forward to working with you in the future uh you share some great advice to our airmen and our listeners out there or our, our soldiers airmen family members coasties marines everybody that's listening right now you gave some really really good advice and we definitely appreciate that uh, this means so much to everybody uh, watching and uh, thank you all for what you do for the exchange and the military community. Thank you all. Thank See, you Chief, so much. I don't run down Coast Guard, Army, Air Force. I just say service members. Cover all of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and no one has forgotten. That's, that's one last nugget for me. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to sign off. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. It's good Bye. to Thank see you. Exchange out.